Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I've been a big fan of the Wise security cameras. They are very affordable devices that are quite functional, but the original security camera here was not weatherproof and you couldn't use it outside. Now they've got a brand new outdoor camera, which is right here. This is completely wireless and it will run outside for three to six months, depending on how many notifications and alerts it sends out. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this device and what it can do here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that WISE did send this to the channel free of charge. However, I did buy a kit as well that I should be getting here soon. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this camera is all about. Now the price point on this is $49 and that includes the camera and the base station. You can buy additional cameras for $39. Now, unlike the original product here, which worked fully self-contained, this camera requires the base station to operate, and each base station can support up to four cameras. Now, my biggest gripe so far with this is that the base station does not connect to your network via Wi-Fi. It has to be plugged in via hardwired Ethernet. I'm pretty sure they could change this in the future, but at the time I'm recording this video, it does need a hardwired connection to your network to operate. So if you have your internet router on one side of the house and you wanna put the camera on the other side, you might be hitting some range issues with that. So be aware of that. You might need to find some way to extend your network out to the parts of your home in which you want to get more camera coverage. And I'm hoping they address that because I think that's a major shortfall on this one. Uh, you do have to plug it into power here. It's not power over Ethernet. And the base station is designed to work inside the home. Uh, the camera, of course, can work outside. It is weatherproof, but not waterproof. So it can support splashes and rain and snow and all the things it might encounter outdoors. But it's not something that you're going to put underwater. So no monitoring the bottom of your pool or something with this. Uh, interestingly is that both the base station and the camera have SD card slots on them. Uh, the base station's SD card will back up cloud footage and the camera's SD card will record motion events. Now also unlike the original camera which can record continuously, this camera won't because it is operating off a of battery. So what it's going to be doing is basically recording to the card the same stuff it sends up to the WISE cloud and we'll cover the cloud uh, storage features in a little bit as we get further into the review. Uh, now on the bottom of the camera here, you can pull off the uh, base of it so you can bring it in to charge. You also have a tripod mount here as well if you want to use one of those. Uh, the camera will operate, they say, for three to six months between charges. And the longevity of the camera is going to vary based on how much activity it sees. So if you've got a very busy storefront where people are coming in and out all day, that battery life will be much less. But if you've got it out in your backyard where maybe a critter comes by every once in a while, you'll probably get closer to the six month mark. So everyone's mileage will vary on that. Uh, the SD card here goes in on the bottom. And then you also have a spot here in the back for charging. And what's really important with this camera, and these things are in here pretty good for a good reason, uh, is that you wanna make sure that after you finish charging the camera, you really get that seal tight here to keep the water out because they do not recommend or advise to operate the camera continuously powered because it is not going to be weatherproof unless that door is back on and properly sealed up to keep the water out of that USB port there. So just really work on that to make sure it goes flush and it's in place. Uh, the same here with the micro SD card slot on the bottom. And then you put it back out on the magnetic stand and you are good to go. Uh, the base station here does have a USB port. At the time I'm recording this, they're not doing anything with that port. I would imagine at some point in the future, maybe it will work with the WISE sensors that we've covered in a previous review. But right now that port is unused. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is get this camera hooked up and what we're going to do is let it sit out for the weekend and I'll be back on Monday or Tuesday here and we'll see exactly how the camera works. We'll take a look at its video quality and some of the other features that we can do with it. So I'm going to go get my screwdriver out, put this thing outside and we'll be back once we've got some footage recorded. Well, a weekend became a week because shortly after we got the camera installed on my garage, 
we ended up getting a tropical storm. It was a pretty nasty one, but it was a great way to test out the camera. So here is a shot that was taken during that storm. You can see the wind is blowing pretty hard on the tail end. Uh, definitely a lot of compression artifacts here on the recording. That's to be expected on one of these lower cost cameras. It is recording at 1080p and you've got a decent field of view on it, as you can see here on a nicer day, about 110 degrees. So I was pleased with the video quality overall. It is good for uh, what it is, and I replaced actually a Blink camera that stopped working uh, on my garage over there with this one, and I like the quality of what this camera is outputting a little bit better. Uh, so really no complaints during the day. Uh, night vision doesn't look too bad on it either. This is with everything completely dark outside. You can see it illuminates pretty decently with its built-in IR illuminator. So that was good. My only complaint though is that if you've got somebody walking up to it like I am here, as the person gets closer, that illuminator is so bright that it washes out the face and you really can't identify the person uh, if somebody is sneaking around your property at night. And there doesn't appear to be, at least at the time I'm recording this video, a way to turn down that illuminator a little bit to balance things out better. Hopefully they can add that feature in the future. Now this being a WISE product, it will work with other WISE devices. We've reviewed a bunch of them in the past, including their uh, plugs and light bulbs and other cameras. And if I want to look at my garage camera right now, I can just tap on it. And what it will do is connect to the camera and start feeding video and audio from the camera back to the phone here. So I can log into that camera anywhere in the world, provided my internet is working and we're good to go there. Uh, you'll note though that the battery life here is at about 54 percent and the reason why the battery is at that level after about a week of usage is that i've been experimenting with the camera quite a bit to prepare this review i've been connecting to it like you just saw there i had it run some time lapses which i'll show you in a few minutes so i'm doing things that are going to eat at the battery a bit more than a camera that's just sitting out there uh, waiting for motion to occur but if you have an area that's going to have a lot of activity, like the front of my garage here, it's likely you're going to be closer to the three-month mark on battery life before a recharge is required versus the six months. And again, your mileage is going to vary uh, based on what you're doing with the camera. Now, when you connect to the camera, you've got a lot of different things that you can do with it when you have that connection established. Uh, the first thing here is the little speaker icon. When this is lit up like it is right now, you're going to get all of the audio that the camera's microphone is picking up. I found it to be a pretty good experience, and when we were shooting that shot of me outside during the evening, I recorded some audio with that shot. Let's have a listen. I am testing the test of the camera to see how it works. So there you go. If you got people in your driveway or something chatting, you're going to hear what they're saying. And that audio should provide some context, perhaps for a motion alert that goes off on it. Uh, next to it, you've got a record button. So if I tap on that right now, it's going to start recording video of what the camera is seeing. And it will record that onto the camera's SD card. And if I hit it again here, that will stop the recording and it will drop it into the gallery, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, next to it, you've got a microphone button, and when you tap on this, it will allow you to speak into your phone and then have somebody near the camera hear what you're saying through the camera's speaker. I did find the speaker to be very tinny and not all that loud, not the best experience, but if you have it by your front door, somebody should be able to hear what you're saying. It's just not a very good speaker, but it's adequate enough for what it is, and that should be better than having nothing, but it could be a little better. Uh, there's also a photo button here, so if I tap that, it will take a photo and save that photo onto the SD card. Now, if we go over here to more, we can jump into the album, and that will give you the ability to look at some of the things that you have recorded onto the camera, like the photo we just took or one of the videos that we shot, uh, so that's useful. Uh, you also have the ability to take time lapses and you can either do one immediately or you can schedule it for certain times so you could do a sunrise or a sunset if you wanted to uh, you could point it at a flower and have it record the progress of that flower blooming so this is what the time lapse looks like after it fires off pretty cool stuff uh, what the camera is doing is basically taking a still frame at a set interval and then it's compiling all of those still images into a video that you can then download and watch like we just had up on screen here. 
I was not able to get the scheduling to work with this feature. It just could be a little bug in the early version of the software that we're playing with. But basically what you do is you jump into that time lapse setting and then you can set the duration and the interval and it will tell you how long of a video you will get based on the interval that you're programming into it. So right now I'll get a video that is 15 seconds long but it's going to take it 15 minutes to capture all of the footage and then you can go in here and adjust how often it fires off and for how long that process should go for and then you will get a time-lapse video that you can share with your friends a little bit later. So that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, you also have the ability to turn off the motion tagging. You might have seen that in a few of the sample images we were playing back a few minutes ago. Basically what it'll do is it'll show you what it thinks is moving and what triggered the motion alert. And that's often useful if you're having a hard time seeing exactly what the camera thought it picked up. And then you can also set a scheduled recording. And what this will do is basically just start recording for a length of time that you specify at a time period that you want. So for example, I could have it uh, record a video on Saturday, August 15th from 3 to 5 p.m. and it would dump that recording off on the SD card for me. Uh, but just know that that will take a lot of battery life to do and it's not going to be something you'll want to do all that often, especially if the battery life on the camera is at a low point. So let's jump in now to the camera settings and you can get to those by hitting the gear icon. And this will be a good opportunity to talk about how the camera records video and how the free Wise Cloud works with it. So we're gonna jump into the events recording option here. And as you can see, I've got detects motion set to on. So if the camera detects motion, it will record 12 seconds of video and then it will upload that video to the Wise Cloud where it will be stored for free for 14 days without a subscription. If you want to store the video longer than that, uh, I would put an SD card in the base station and then as you'll see here, the setting to back up to base station is on. So the base station's SD card will also get a copy of that video and it will record as much video as it can get until the card fills up. Now the other thing here is something called recording cooldown. And what this is, is kind of a battery saving feature so that the camera's battery doesn't die if you've got a lot of motion going on after that recording. So what'll happen here again is it will record 12 seconds of video and then the recording will stop, the video will get uploaded. And then right now the camera is going to wait for the cool down period before it starts recording again. So right now mine is set for three minutes. I can make it as short as one minute and I'll get a warning here about how this might impact battery usage. And what this means is that after that recording is done, it's going to wait a minute and if it's still detecting motion, it will record another video. And this is one of the trade-offs you have with one of these battery powered outdoor cameras. There's a trade-off between battery life and the longevity of the recording. And you can make some adjustment to it here, but that is pretty much it. I do believe what WISE will be doing in the near future is allowing people who are paying for their subscription plan to have more options within this event recording feature here. But of course, that will impact battery life if you shorten the cool down period or lengthen the recording. But at the time I'm recording this video, it is 12 seconds with a max of one minute cool down. And that will be the case if you don't want to pay for a subscription. All right, let's take a look at a few other settings here. We've got the notification settings where you can decide whether or not you want motion or low battery notifications. If I turn off motion notifications, I won't be notified, but it will still record the motion events if I set the motion event option to on like we had earlier. Uh, I did find though that I don't get notified until the event recording concludes. So typically it's running about 15 seconds behind when that event actually started. So just be aware of that. It's not an instant notification of somebody in your driveway. It's going to be delayed by at least 15 seconds or so in my testing. So just be aware of that. Uh, the detection settings here determine how sensitive it is. At the time I'm recording this video, you cannot manually set detection zones or exclude different portions of the image. Uh, so right now, as you can see, it's looking within this box, but I can't limit it to maybe just this small section of driveway. It's going to pick up everything. I have found, though, that this is working 
really, really well. I am not getting many false alarms at all. These trees are moving all the time, even down in the lower section here, and it's never pushing me alerts for things like that. Uh, it is detecting vehicles driving by, which is what I want. And of course, when people or animals are walking around on the driveway, I'm getting those detected. And apparently there is an infrared sensor on the camera that is allowing those notifications to be a little bit more accurate. And I found that to be really good here. So I have no complaints about the notifications. It's generally pushing things that are legitimate events for me. And then over here in advanced settings, you got a few other things that you can adjust. You can decide whether or not the night vision mode is always on, off, or on auto. You also have the ability to turn off those infrared lights that were blowing out my face a little bit earlier. I would, again, like to see an adjustment there so you can balance things out because it would be good to have those lights on, just not as bright, perhaps, as they uh, were when we were uh, looking at that a little bit earlier. Uh, if you have the camera mounted upside down, you can rotate the image in here, and you can also decide whether or not you want the timestamp or WISE logos on there. And you can also see the health of your SD card on the camera too. And they've got one other neat little feature on here called travel mode. And when you enable this, the camera will essentially detach itself from its base station and work as its own independent security camera. And it will record motion events or time-lapse video to the SD card that's installed inside the camera. So you could take the camera with you on a trip and have it basically be a surveillance camera for your hotel room or something like that given the fact that the battery on the camera will last a good long time, you should be able to set it up for a week-long vacation and be able to keep track of what's going on in your hotel room when you're not there. Kind of a neat little feature they added to the mix here, and that's something that you can configure through the settings on the app. Now, as I mentioned, this is integrated with the rest of the WISE ecosystem, so all of the other WISE devices are in the same app, and all of your other cameras will integrate with this as well. So if you are looking on your events page here on the app, you will see everything that this camera is picking up along with the other WISE cameras that you have. You can, of course, filter things down so you can look at one camera specifically if you need to. And I have apparently the beta version of their person detection running. And this has been working pretty nicely as well. So you can see it picked me up uh, setting up a camera a little bit earlier there and it was able to determine that this was a person that walked in front of it. This service is going to be offered a little bit later to people who are not uh, longstanding WISE customers, uh, so be on the lookout for that, but it also, as you can see here, uh, gives me all of the motion events that the camera picked up. And again, I'm not getting a lot of false alarms. Every one of these is a legit person or thing uh, that's been walking in front of my camera, so that's been pretty good. Uh, one last thing to take a look at, and those are some of the rules that you can set up and integrate here. So for example, I could set up a device trigger so that every time my garage camera detects motion, I can have it turn on one of my lights somewhere in the house or turn on a plug somewhere or maybe have one of my indoor cameras begin recording to its SD card. There's a lot of nice integration here. Uh, you can also integrate with if this, then that, IFTTT. So you can have non-WISE light bulbs, for example, turn on when that WISE camera triggers off. Altogether, it's really nicely integrated here, and I think they're off to a good start with this outdoor product. So overall, I'm quite pleased with what WISE has put together here. I think this is a tremendously good value for what it is. Uh, this is not a robust security system. It is a notification camera very similar to what the Blink cameras are, and we've reviewed those as well. I've been very happy with the Blink cameras that I've been using, but I think this one is a little better. I like that it's got an internal battery that you can charge just by plugging it in versus the AA lithiums that the Blink cameras require. Uh, the visual quality is better here, and because I'm using all the other WISE products now, I like the ability to integrate it uh, more tightly with some of the other things that I've got in the house. My only gripe at the moment is that these base stations require Ethernet to work. And I think a lot of consumers are used to things just connecting to their Wi-Fi. And I'm hoping that they can maybe solve that problem through a software update in the future. Now, what I wanted to do was set this camera up on the opposite end of my home to where the garage camera currently is. And I tried to connect this one up to the garage base station, which is in the bonus room above where that camera is situated outside and this thing couldn't pick it up on that other side of the house. So this one 
will have to be set up closer to where this camera is going to be. And it's not a big deal for me. I've got Ethernet everywhere because I do tech reviews for a living, but a lot of consumers don't have that. Now, you can get by with a power line adapter or one of those Mocha adapters that we've looked at. Uh, those should work. These cameras don't use that much bandwidth, but you shouldn't have to buy extra stuff here. It would be nice for this thing just to connect up to the existing Wi-Fi and be done with it, just like their other cameras do. So hopefully that's one thing they fix, but otherwise, it's a good product and a solid value, and I'm looking forward to integrating this into all of my other IoT devices I'm currently using. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, David Hockman, Brian Parker, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.